And we're going to look together at verses 1 through 12. And we've already sang, thank you Jim, about the Magi and the, the visiting of, of Jesus. Um, and I, I want to say thank you to Candy and to Kermit for putting up our next banner, which says, Lamb of God. Uh, so we have the Prince of Peace. What We started with Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, and now we have the Lamb of God, and we're going to have one more uh, coming up soon. And we just want to proclaim that Jesus, one, is the reason for the season. Amen. And, and we want to proclaim that Jesus, even as an infant coming, uh, was and is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so, I just rejoice in that. I also um, just rejoice that we get to gather on Wednesday nights. If, you're, if you missed last week, wow, we had a great time. Um, Holy Spirit just decided to show up, and, and we had lives that were touched, and people who tried to share but uh, began to weep, and we're just going to pray that that keeps up. So... You guys just come on, 6.30 on Wednesdays, and um, yeah, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, I just want us to read this, this story. And after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. And when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. And all of Jerusalem with him and when he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But when you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, and for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi a, a secretly and found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child, as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star which had been in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream, they did not go back to Herod. And they returned to their own country by another route. You know, I, I think we should read this story more often than just Christmas. Yeah. I mean, it is a fantastic story. Well, let's ask the Lord to teach us today. Lord, we come into your house with your people, and we ask that your Holy Spirit would move in our lives. And Lord, we pray that you would so fill us with your joy that this 
year is the greatest Christmas that we have ever experienced. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, would you agree with me that Christmas, even though it's a joyful time and trees and lights and presents, that this can be one of the most depressing yes. times of yes. the year. Yes. Because it brings to memory all the things of the past. It reminds us of all the things that used to be. And there are people in our lives who have great sorrow in this time. We, we have some dear friends in Georgia who lost their daughter due to a tragic car accident. It was the only, it's, it's the only person in my life that I, I led to faith in Jesus. I baptized her into the church and I performed her wedding. And one day I'm going to see Beth face to face. Yes, amen. But her parents, even, I mean, it's been probably 20, 25 years ago. They have never celebrated Christmas at home. They get in a car and they go to the beach, they go to the mountains, they go somewhere to get away from the, from the pain. But they have continued to survive. They, they have continued to handle what life had thrown at them. But we need to recognize the only way for us and the only way for us to help others is to recognize that it is the joy of the season and the joy of Jesus that's going to get us through these kinds of holidays. Yes, and I really, really, really want to encourage you to experience joy in this season. I mean, Today is the 12th, right, of December. So if I back up to, I've already said, I'll say it again. On the 4th of December, a year ago, I just had a heart attack. You know, we were trying to enjoy the beach and, and getting away. How do I survive? How do I deal with what happened a year ago today? I choose to find joy in what's going on. And if I had not gotten the right kind of care, and I'm not here today, well, I know where I would be. I would be in heaven, and I would be rejoicing with Lots and lots and lots of people. People always ask me, how many funerals have you done? Or how many weddings have you done? Well, I can tell you, I've done a whole lot more funerals than weddings. Because the church that we served in Georgia, we had like 800 members. And of those members, we had a lot of folks who were over 80 and 90 years old. And so, I always said they came in threes. If I did one funeral, I did three funerals. I, we had to get out of there. It was killing me. You know, it was so exhausting. But it gave me the opportunity, and Laurie the opportunity, to love on people in the midst of their sorrow. And so, when I look at Isaiah, turn there with me, Isaiah 53, it's not too far away. Isaiah 53, 
I just want you to understand that Jesus understands our sorrows. Isaiah 53, verse 3, verse 4, verse 5, and verse 6. And this is talking about Jesus. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But... Don't you love a good holy but right there? He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. You see, it is Jesus who understands our pain. It is Jesus who brought us peace. It is Jesus, by his wounds, we are healed. And then that last verse, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. So God has laid on Jesus our sin. He has laid on Jesus our wrongdoing. And when we begin to understand that Jesus took away our sorrow, we begin to say, you know, maybe, just maybe, I could have joy. I could be a, a person who rejoices over what God has done. And the story that we read initially in Matthew 2 is about the Magi, the, the kings from the east, the magicians from the east, who have come to worship Jesus, and here Jesus has no idea what's going on. Now, we have to recognize that this is an encounter not with the baby Jesus. This is Jesus a little bit older. Still, he doesn't comprehend what's going on. But you figure, the star appears in the east, leads these three guys to Bethlehem, and by the time they get there, Jesus has been born. Now, if you come to my house, you're always going to find that the, the, the manger and the shepherds are over here. Because... They were on time. But then across the room or across the piano, as it is this year, you've got the magi and the camels because they're tr still trying to get there. But don't you worry. They get there. And they show up. And they bring a lot of joy. And that's what we need. We need the ability to, to hear from others who have been through difficult times, but have chosen to persevere and have chosen to walk in joy. Now, look at Psalm chapter 51. Psalm 51 is the story of King David, who has been disobedient to God, who has had an affair with Bathsheba, which turns out to bring forth the son Solomon. And here is David crying out to God. Look at verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, 
and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and grant to me a willing spirit to sustain me. In the middle of that, he says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. See, there are times where we need to cry out to God and say, God, man, my life's a wreck. I've, I've given my life to you and I'm following you, but there is no joy in my life. Or, I'm learning about you, but I haven't chosen to follow you yet, and I just don't have the joy in life that I'd like to have. And there are people in your life who are miserable. Amen? Amen. There are people who have an awful life. And what do they need? They need to cry out like David and say, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Or restore unto me joy because I'm just about ready to receive salvation. I, I really, really think that we are living in a time where people are just totally disregarding God and disregarding the Word of God. Right, Cheryl? We were discussing that earlier. And, and people don't seem to, to care. But we know that according to the Word of God, the only joy in life, because joy is, is not just temporary, it can come again and again versus happiness. I'm, I'm happy today. Yes. Well, happiness is going to fade. But joy can be permanent. Yes. Amen. Amen. Man, y'all are quiet today. <laughs> joy can be permanent. Amen. Amen. And when, when I find myself Ignoring the teaching of Scripture, I find myself with joy like the fading sunset. It's just going away. And I'm not going to experience it. But when I begin to listen to the Word of God, like Philippians 4, which says, Rejoice in the Lord always. always. Or, like 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Be joyful always. It's okay, you can't get it wrong. Rejoice always. If I begin to put those in my heart, and like David in Psalm 51, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. That begins to allow the Holy Spirit to rise up within me, and I begin to be reminded, yeah, life is tough. Yeah, things are hard. But I have the joy of the Lord. I have the joy of the Lord. And when I look at, at baby Jesus, I guess we don't really have a baby Jesus, do we? Am I missing something? Okay, we'll have to work on that. Next year, I'll, I'll come back, or whatever. And, and we'll, we'll put it on the piano, and, or, or something. But it's just a reminder, right? That here is a baby born to be God with us into a society that doesn't want anything to do with Him. I mean, what happens in Matthew 2, when the Magi show up and say, Hey, 
where is the baby born king of the Jews? What is the king said? Not a whole lot, because he's so scared, he can't figure out what to do. So here come these guys, travel all this way, they show up, and, and the king's like, I have no idea. And what, is, and what does he do? He calls the, you know, he picks on the preachers, right? But you never, you have no idea at times what it is to be a pastor. Because we're going to work on that one. And you find yourself, you know, whatever, wherever you are, especially family gatherings, you know, would you pray? And I, I'm just like, oh, please. Or, you know, you go places and you, you end up being the, the speaker or you, which, which, if you know it's coming, it's not bad. It's those, it's those impromptu things, you know? And, and it's, just, it's just realizing that Herod calls upon the prophets and the teachers and says, what's going on with this guy? Who is this guy? And, and they, they just go, well, the Bible says in Bethlehem of Judea, that's where he'll be born. See, we, we forget that, that we have the ultimate answer book. When people say, well, what's going on? Well, let me, let me look in the Word. Let me see what God has to say. And in this case, God says, the baby has been born in Bethlehem. And, and so the king says, well, why don't you go check it out? But it's not this sense of adoration. I'm so happy you're here. Would you go see the baby? Uh, uh, here, take a gift for me. Can you imagine what that gift would have been? We know the, the three gifts of the king, of the kings, but I don't know. This guy would have sent along a dagger. He would have sent along some kind of, you know, some kind of drink that would have ended the child's life because he was the king. And he wanted to be the only king. And so when you find, when you find yourself in life and, and everyone around you wants to be ahead of you and they want to take charge over you, don't let that take your joy. I mean, because there are times where God has something far better for you than what you thought was the plan and the trajectory that you were on. Yes. So begin to understand that when God begins to move, it's okay to go, you know, I kind of think there's some joy coming on the way. I kind of think there is a, a, a reason to rejoice. And sometimes it's okay just to follow a star and say, I have no idea where this thing's leading. I have no idea what this is doing. But I know, wow, I know that there's an almighty God who is working in my life. Go back to Matthew chapter 2. And, and I, I want to point out verse 10. Matthew 2 and verse 10. It's a really short verse. It says, and... When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Who has a different translation? Anybody? Exceedingly great. Huh? Exceedingly great. Exceedingly great. Janice, what do you have? Same thing. Exceedingly with great joy. Exceedingly with great joy. Kermit? Overjoyed beyond measure. 
Overjoyed beyond measure. Lauren? Overwhelmed with joy. Overwhelmed with joy. Now just think. You're one of the three shepherds. And you've encountered this king, and the king said it's in, it's in Bethlehem. And when you get to Bethlehem, there is a star over the house. And it says, when they found the star, joy. joy. Because you, if you try to figure out where God is and what God is doing, you're going to fail at times. There are times where God is going to go, this is it. You've reached it. Have a seat. There are other times where God is moving and, and you have no idea because he just comes out of the blue. Because he made the blue. He just shows up. And you have to go, Wow, what joy. As opposed to always being overwhelmed by everything and losing your joy. Amen. So, this morning, we had the joy of watching Emily, our two-year-old granddaughter, be dedicated at church. And we were at the chapel in McHenry. That's why we, we got here in time for church. And with my kids, you always wonder, are we going to get out of here on time? But that's the, that's the way it works, right? And, and so we come out of the sanctuary and we're just standing like in the foyer and talking to the kids. And this young man comes up behind me and says, So, you're preaching over at Crossroads. And I said, Yeah, that's what I do every Sunday. And, and he said, well, how's Pastor John? And I said, well, he's great, but he now goes to Meadowridge Church in Antioch and da 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 da. He said, well, I used to go to that church. And this was the, a father with a one year old who was also dedicated the same Sunday. Now, come on, you figure out all these connections. So, he, he said, my name's Chris. I said, Chris, nice to meet you. And I had seen the last name up on the board, and his last name was Parrot. Yes. Oh. He's grown. He has grown up. He has a baby. Yeah. And he just went on and on about the church and how he loved coming here, and, and then they moved, and da, da. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm standing there, just amazed. Why? Well, I don't know where I can show up at another church and meet somebody who is at that church who used to be a part of this church. And, and you can go, oh, that's just coincidence. No. No, that's God's stuff. And it's like, God, what are you doing? What are you saying to me about Crossroads? I got a lot of praying to do this week. Because I tell you, every time something like this happens, and I begin to ask the Lord what's going on, he has faithfully shown me what he was saying and why. 
How many of you know Chris? I'd say half of you guys. Thank you, Amy. I'm glad you know him. So they follow the star, right? And they are super excited. And I, today, because of my experience in talking to Chris, I'm excited. Because you just don't know what the Lord is saying. You know? I, I believe God is starting to do something here. If you'd been here on Wednesday night, you would have said the same thing. Yes. Amen. I mean, I, when, when people try to share their testimony and all they can do is weep, God is up to something. Amen. And the great thing for me is, it's not about me. It's about us being obedient yes. to the Lord. Amen. It's about us deciding that we are going to not only experience the joy of the Lord, we are going to share the joy of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. You see, that's what makes the difference. If what we do here, we just kind of show up, and yeah, we're, I'm joyful, you're joyful, yeah, you're joyful, you're always joyful. And, and I begin to, that's all I do, and yet, if I don't take it with me, there's something wrong. You know, it was like with Chris this morning, I was able to say, you know, God's doing something. God's up to something. And, and you know what he said? This is the quote of the, of the year. He said, you know, that church is on a great corner. I, I just can't imagine what God wants to do. Come on, I'll hear an amen. amen. I mean, yeah. This is a place that God wants to move. Yes, amen. Amen. That's right. This is a place where the joy of the Lord needs to be. It's almost like <laughs> we need to put a fountain out front. I'm not going to do it, I promise. <laughs> but, you know, put a fountain so when people come by, what do they see? They see we have a big sign. The joy of the Lord is here. Amen? Yes. Oh, come on. Do I hear an amen? amen? I mean, wouldn't that be cool? They have this big fountain. and They, they, no, I won't go there. They would think we're crazy in this community, right? But we're not. We are on fire, and we have the joy of the Lord in our hearts. Amen? amen. And we are believers that the steps that we take determine how God moves here and around us. And when we get to the point where there's no more room for any more people, we're going to have to get on our faces and say, God, what do we do next? That's right. Amen. What do we do? So, what are the, the, the final steps of the Magi? There are three. I just want you to hear this. One, they come and they worship Jesus. So what do we need to do? We need to come and we need to worship Jesus. Because He is the Son of God. And we need to give Him all the praise. I mean... Every time we gather, I don't know, Florence, here we go. You're going to have to get up and lead us in that Holy Ghost dance we got you started on Wednesday. Because she got a shot, and, and she feels better. And we, sh we should never disregard how the Lord works. And we got out in the aisle, and we were just enjoying the Lord. Sorry, Jim. We were just dancing in the Lord. <laughs> We were having a great time together. Why? Because there was new freedom in a 92-year-old's movement to the glory of God. 
Amen? Amen. And that's what we want to do. We want to come in here. We want to get so filled with the glory of God, with the joy of the Lord, that it becomes our strength. And then, what's the second thing? It says they brought gifts to Jesus. And we talked about these before, a number of weeks back, right? He brought, what was the first gift? Gold, Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. myrrh. I think we need to continually remind each other that we give, not for this church's benefit. We give out of a sense of joy that the Lord's given us so much. And so we, we bring our gold, which is a gift, which is fit for a king. We bring our frankincense, which is a gift fit for a priest, because Jesus is our high priest. And then we bring a gift of myrrh, which is the embalming, Nectar for someone who has died. Isn't that amazing? That Jesus, born, brand new. And these dudes show up, and what are they bringing? They're bringing the very thing that he will be embalmed with. Because he is destined to die for us. If you go through the Bible, there are so many passages about joy. Nehemiah chapter 8, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. Yeah. What about Luke 15? There is more joy in heaven over one sinner who comes to know the Lord than in the ninety and nine that go their way. But I gotta, I gotta go to one verse we don't often pull into this scenario. And that is in Luke chapter 1. So you have to go from Matthew, Mark, and then Luke chapter 1 and verse 39. And I really just, I just want you to have this reference. I'll just read 41. And when, G, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb, the baby in her womb, yeah, I'm not sure I know the word leapt, the word leaped, the word, how, how about, how about Florence, that baby did a Holy Ghost dance in her mama's belly when the mother of Jesus walked in the door. Amen. You see, I, I think we have given up on real joy, and we have chosen to ignore real joy, when in this situation, Mary, Elizabeth, in walks Mary, and the baby in Elizabeth's womb begins to leap. Can you imagine what she looked like when that baby started leaping? You ever had, I've never had a baby in here. I don't get it. But I, I, I've seen three of them grow up in here, in, in Laurie, and you guys have had 
your experiences too. But here is a child leaping for joy. Wow. But you know the tough part about that? Who's that baby? John, John. John. John the Baptist is the baby. Yes. The cousin of Jesus. Yes. Who after six months of ministry in the name of Jesus found himself living no more. Found himself having his head chopped off. You see, even though there is a, a, an untimely end that's coming, we need to leap for joy. Amen. Because we can trust in God. Yep. And, and you may say to me, well, what good was the life of John the Baptist? What good did he do? Because he died as a martyr. But what did Jesus say about John the Baptist? No there has been no greater prophet than John the Baptist. No greater man born of woman. Exactly what he says. How would you like for Jesus to speak of your life and say, man, there was nobody greater. There is so much joy that God wants to place in our lives. We find ourselves missing it because our eyes are on this world and the problems that we face. We, as a church, are going to leap for joy. I'll say it again. We, as a church, are going to leap for joy. Amen. Amen. Because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. The Lord is looking to us to be like the wise men, to celebrate, to worship, and then the last piece is they packed their bags and they went home. Sometimes it's important for us to go home. Because there's stuff at home we're missing. And if we are the church that leaps for joy when we walk out that door, we go home with joy. And we celebrate with joy. Even though the circumstances are all wrong, we rejoice in what God is doing. This morning, as we consider this simple story that we've heard a thousand times, we need to understand that we, we can not only have joy here, but we can take joy home. Yes. Wherever Amen. home is. That's right. Is it home where our spouse is? Is it home where our friends are? Is it home where our family is? Mm -hmm. And we, we get to show up and do the Holy Spirit thing. Because God is up to something. Can you imagine those magi traveling along the dusty road with those old camels? Can you imagine the stories they told? Going home. Because their stories coming over were like, what are we doing? And then they got to turn around and go home. And can you imagine every campfire, every night, 
Can you believe what God did in our lives? He took us all the way to this strange town. We got to see the Savior of the world. And now we're going home. And they pass around the old Kleenex and everybody wiped their eyes. And then they would continue to take the message back home. And that's us. We get to sit in the joy, experience the joy, feel the joy. But then the joy's not real unless we take it with us. Wherever we go. Let's bow to